Margaret. Sean, good to see you back here. Question for you, too. One on Iran. Will this administration certify Iran's compliance with the nuclear deal? Uh, the uh, JCPOA uh, authority was delegated to the State Department, and the Secretary of Defense, excuse me, the Secretary of State will uh, have an announcement very shortly on, on that deal. Uh, I think you all know that the President has made very clear uh, that he thought this was a bad deal, a bad deal for the United States. Um, and I will uh, wait until the State Department makes further action before going any further. And secondly, your uh, counterpart in Russia, uh, Dmitry Peskov, who speaks for Vladimir Putin, said today that uh, they expect their properties that were seized by the prior administration to be returned and without any uh, stipulations or attachments to that. Uh, was this discussed with the President? Does the President have a strong view? What is it that the President would like to see in return before handing these properties back? I, I know that Secretary Tillerson uh, that falls under his purview. He has been having discussions, and, and I would refer you to the State Department for. This came from Vladimir Putin's office. I, I understand that, but in our country right now, the Secretary of State is handling that that portfolio, uh, and so I would refer you to them on that. But did the president bring this up at all in his conversations in Hamburg with Vladimir Putin? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I, I'd be glad to find out on that. I don't believe it did, but I'd be glad to find out. Tola. Uh, thank you, John. Um, the president tweeted earlier today that. Uh, most politicians would have gone into the meeting like the one Don Jr. attended in order to get info on an opponent. He said that's politics. His FBI director nomination, nominee said that uh, anyone who was approached by a hostile government uh, for opposition research should contact the FBI rather than taking the meeting. Uh, who's right? And, and what's the White House's position on whether or not it's okay to meet with a hostile government for opposition research? Well, look, you know I'm not going to get into the specifics of this, uh, but I will say that um, that is quite often for people who are given information during the heat of a campaign uh, to, to ask what that is. Uh, that's what simply he did. The President's made it clear through his tweet, um, and, uh, and there was nothing that, as far as we know, that would lead anyone to believe that, uh, that there was anything except for a discussion about adoption of the Majinsky Act. But um, I would refer you back to counsel on that one. Okay. And can I ask about counsel about Mark Kasowitz? He was um, reportedly, he exchanged emails with a a uh, private citizen with uh, a number of threats and a profanity-laced uh, set of comments. Um, does the White House and the President still have confidence in Mr. Kasowitz to um, speak for uh, the administration on this Russian matter? Yes, he does. And I, I know Mr. Kasowitz has, has issued an apology in that matter. Zeke? John, John um, first, uh, follow up to his question there. Um, uh, he, uh, the President's tweet this morning uh, regarding uh, the Russian investigation is did Ty Cobb vet that? Could you talk a little bit about his role? Is his job here to manage the president's personal response to the Russia investigation? Um, Mr. Cobb, you know, as you know, within the counsel's office, there are various attorneys that have different portfolios. Um, and while we have outside counsel, a lot of times the requests that we get from this room require us to go to counsel and say, can we answer this question? Uh, what, what can we say or can't we say? Um, you do your best a lot of times to, to get us to. Uh, to make a case why this should be answered by the White House. And so we, we end up spending a lot of time talking to the counsel's office uh, about what can and can't be referred to outside counsel, what still remains in our purview. Uh, and so uh, it was the decision of the White House uh, to bring someone on board that, like in a lot of other areas that we have counsels dedicated to that, uh, that the, there was significant um, in interest in the subject to, to do that. So in the case of the President's tweet this morning, was that something that went through uh, this uh, Mr. Cobb? I, I don't believe so. And, th and what is one uh, follow on uh, Made in America? Uh, you mentioned uh, this, this Scorsese helicopter on this park in South Lawn that would be known as Marine One. Um, who paid for that to fly here um, from, I guess, probably Quantico? And also, is it appropriate to use uh, military resources for a political event? Uh, well, it would be at bowling, uh, is where I believe that's held. Uh, but, you know, I think we're, we're very proud. I mean, the, the idea is to showcase this week things that are made in America. And I know uh, Sikorsky and the state of Connecticut are very proud of the fact uh, that they contribute to our national security, that there are, I, I assume, hundreds if not thousands of people whose job depends on that. And I think, uh, like most Americans, we're all proud of, of the helicopter and other military equipment that so many Americans work tirelessly to do. So, of course, it's appropriate to highlight that. Uh, Hunter. Thank you, Sean. Um, I'm wondering whether you can tell us um, if Made in America Week will include the Trump Organization or Ivanka Trump brands committing to stop manufacturing wares abroad. Say that. I'm sorry. If the if this as part of Made in America Week, if the Trump Organization 
or Ivanka Trump's brands will make any kind of commitment to stop manufacturing um, gifts, clothes, and other wares yeah. abroad? So there's a couple things that are interesting about that question. First, I think what's really important is the president's agenda, regulatory relief and tax relief, um, are focused on trying to make sure that all companies can hire here, can expand here, can manufacture here. Uh, that's something that he wants for every company, and you've seen him talk about that extensively. Um, with respect to you know his own companies, obviously it's inappropriate uh, to discuss uh, the, how anything would affect their own companies. But I can tell you that in some cases, uh, there are certain supply chains or scalability that may not be available in this country. Um, I'm not going to comment on specific products, but I will tell you that uh, the overall arching goal, of course, though, is to grow manufacturing, to grow investment here in the United States, and to grow uh, U.S. workers here. So that, that remains the, the overall objective. But obviously, it might be a sacrifice <coughs> given certain questions about going rates and stuff, but wouldn't it be sort of a, a way to show leadership? To uh, again, I, it, it would be, it's not appropriate for me to stand up here and comment about a business. I, I believe you know, that that's little out of bounds. But again, I would go back to the President's broader goal, which is to create uh, investment here, to bring back the manufacturing base. And I think when you look at a lot of these indices that measure uh, confidence, um, both in terms of CEOs, manufacturers, and uh, th that it, it, they're all-time highs. And I think part of that is that there's a lot of confidence that the President's agenda uh, is going to accomplish that. Charlie? Uh, just a question about the DHS decision to allow 15,000 new temporary worker visas. How does that not conflict with the President's higher American message? I, again, I'll, I'll refer you to DHS on this, but I think one of the things that you're seeing through this is uh, it's not just the number; it's it's a lot of the qualifications and a lot of the uh, a lot of th that goes through there to ensure that we are hire hiring and bringing in the people. As you know, um, the president has been uh, supportive of the Raise Act by Senators Cotton and Purdue, uh, which seeks to uh, really look at it more of a merit-based immigration system, and that's something that he uh, continues to push for and will continue to work with uh, Senators Cotton and Purdue and others to to help get that uh, in a in a place that will focus more on merit-based. Um, and really provide the overall reform that, that he's been talking about for a long time. Sean, Dave. Sean, thanks. What's the White House reaction to the government of Iran announcing that the, they've sentenced the Chinese-American student from Princeton to 10 years for espionage? And um, also, could you fill us in on any new sanctions on Iran? Uh, I'm not going to comment on any new sanctions. If there are some, I, at that point, Treasury would be the one to make that announcement uh, when that's appropriate. Um, obviously, we're disappointed. Um, in that and um, with respect to, to that individual, he is someone that we're keeping an eye on. Yeah. Sean. Thanks, Sean. Um, with regard, I want to ask you about steel tariffs. The president told reporters on the plane last week that he was considering tariffs and quotas uh, with regard to foreign steel. Right. This being made in America week, um, you know, do, can we expect an announcement? Has the president made up his mind on whether he's going to do tariffs, quotas, or both? Uh, I think that the President's comments on Air Force One speak for themselves. When he's ready to make an announcement on that, we'll, 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 be, we'll share that with you, but uh, that is something that the team is still discussing with him. John Decker. Uh, thanks a lot, Sean. Is the President resigned to the idea that it seems unlikely that the Senate will vote on any type of repeal and replace bill any time in the immediate future? I, I know that Senator McConnell has made it clear that he would like Senator McCain back. We obviously wish him a speedy recovery. And as soon as Senator McConnell, um, uh, as soon as Senator McCain can travel back and Senator McConnell uh, feels it's appropriate, he'll schedule that vote. We feel very confident about where we are now, and we look forward to uh, getting that bill on the president's desk and getting it signed. Hello, Jim. Yeah. America, I just wanted to ask you a real quick question. I yeah. realize you can't speak, as you said, specifically about um, the president, Donald J. Trump organization's companies, but just wanted to get a, a, a view from you on what critics are saying about whether the president is the right vessel for this message. After all, um, he has uh, shirts made in China and Bangladesh and India, um, other products made like Trump vodka made in the Netherlands. So give me a sense, if you could, about whether the president is the right vessel for the message that he's going to deliver later today. Um, before of the press. Yeah, yeah I, I actually look at it in a very different way, which is the, the president's been a very successful businessman on a number of fronts and a number of areas and industries. And to understand very firsthand what 
the tax burden and what the regulatory burden do to a business that wants to grow or expand here or hire here. Uh, so I think he actually is in a very unique way, uh, understands the challenges that our regulatory system and our tax system put on businesses that want to hire here, that want to grow here, that need um, scalability and capacity here in a way that maybe isn't because of, uh, of some of our arcane trade laws or regulations or our tax laws. So I, I actually think that he's in a very unique way um, able to talk about the, the challenges that so many of these companies face as they choose to expand um, and some of the tariffs and quotas that they face in other markets. You know, I, I know that some of the stuff you look at, at, at a company like Caterpillar who's out there and you talk to them about some of the tariffs that they face going into other countries. Um, when you're talking about an earth mover, um, you know, a D11 or something else where you're talking about a million plus dollar piece of equipment, a 20 percent tariff is $200,000. So if you're going into a country where uh, our company, our countries, our companies are disadvantaged by a huge tariff, that's immediately putting them at a disadvantage. And the president understands um, what that means to a company that wants to grow and expand um, throughout the globe and, and meet new markets and go into other places. So uh, I think he understands it probably very, very uniquely. Sean, Jim, Sean, Fred, you, Sean. Fred, uh, Fred. Yeah, okay, thanks, Sean. Uh, just, yeah, we'll uh, get to you, Andrew. Don't worry. Uh, thanks, Sean. A uh, couple questions on the Voter Integrity Commission mm -hmm. meeting on Wednesday. I uh, want to ask you, uh, without full cooperation of all the states, uh, would the commission consider uh, buying some of the uh, in, uh, registration information, sort of the way campaigns do, or using maybe a private organization like Aristotle International? Most of this information is available. I mean, all that those companies are doing is buying it from the state. So, I mean, I don't think there'd be any reason to go to a private vendor. I think we should be able to do this utilizing uh, official resources uh, that exist within a state. Uh, again, I think there's been some miscommunication on what they're seeking. Uh, the commission has asked us to, that each state provide that information that is public, uh, that they share. And because that varies from state to state, what they're willing to give out, the commission was illustrative in its letter in trying to describe what it was looking for. Uh, but I think we're going to move forward very well. Uh, Trey? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I did have another. And, uh, uh, and, and that's, um, there, there was hacking uh, into voter registration rules uh, in Illinois, Arizona. We found out recently South Carolina was reported. Uh, is that going to be something the commission was looking for at all? I think the commission's got a very broad mandate to make sure that um, there's, there's the greatest degree of integrity in our voting system and confidence in it. And uh, so I, I don't want to get ahead of their agenda, but I think all areas um, like that are going to probably get brought up. Uh, but let's the first meeting's Wednesday. We'll see what comes of it. Trey? Thanks, Sean. Uh, two point policy questions for you. First, what steps is President Trump taking to ensure that the Israelis are comfortable with the U.S. brokered ceasefire in Syria? Uh, so obviously, I, uh, with respect that you're talking about Prime Minister Netanyahu's comments. Um, one, I would refer you to him to that. But uh, this, there's a shared interest that we have with, with Israel, making sure that Iran uh, does not gain a foothold military base-wise in southern Syria. So while um, you know, we're going to continue those talks, obviously uh, we want to have a, a, a productive ceasefire, uh, but we also want to make sure that we're not our, one of our other objectives is obviously remains to make sure that Iran does not gain a foothold in southern Syria. So uh, we need to continue to have that discussion with Prime Minister Netanyahu about his concerns, but I think there is a shared goal there. Eamon? Thanks, John. Uh, with the health care bill in limbo, what's the administration's plan to move forward on tax reform? Can you do it uh, without having moved on health care first? Well, obviously, uh, the Senate's still on track to vote, uh, which is great, and the President will sign it as soon as it's, it's um, you know, as soon as it's possible. Uh, we're going to continue to plan. Uh, we've had well into the hundreds, if not close to a thousand, li listening sessions with different entities. So, not the number of entities, not the number of meetings. Um, so they'll continue that outreach. Continue to hear with folks. There's been a very robust discussion with um, House and Senate leadership and the committees of relevant uh, jurisdiction, um, and we're going to continue that. But we're going to keep. Uh, moving that, that along. I expect there will be some activity in August and then into September, uh, but we're still on track to do that, and uh, we hope to have the health care bill completely locked up as soon as uh, Senator McConnell uh, d deems it's appropriate. Can I follow up? Kristen. Um, there is concern among those who support the health care bill that this extension is going to give the opponents of the bill um, more traction. What specifically is President Trump going to do? try to get this bill over the finish line? What will this bill look like? 
Well, I mean, he's been very active on the phone. He's going to continue to meet with senators. I think he'll have another some senators over tonight. Uh, he's been very active over the weekend. Uh, the vice president's been extremely engaged as well. Um, we'll continue those discussions. So, um, you know, I think we're going to do what we did the last time. Be very. The president's going to be engaged. He's going to get this done. Um, and then, you know, it's been said before, but I, I, there's no one better than Mitch McConnell when it comes to uh, to knowing how and when to, to make a bill successful in the Senate. So we have every confidence in, in the majority leader's ability to, to get this done, and the president will do whatever he has to. Uh, to support those efforts. And who's coming over tonight? Is it just I, I don't leadership? have a list for you right and, now. And one quickly on Russia. President Trump has referred to the Russia investigation as a hoax, a witch hunt. Given the meeting that Donald Trump Jr. had, does he now acknowledge that the special counsel is a legitimate investigation? I think Mr. Sekulo answered that question very extensively this weekend. What would um, you say? I, I, again, I, I think it's been asked and answered. Um, I think we did something with Van Christen, David Jackson. Uh, Sean, can you tell me how uh, how these products were selected in each of the 50 states, and do you know if most of the owners are Trump supporters? I don't. Uh, you're free to ask them. I think uh, the, the pool will be out there. I think there's some folks, so uh, feel free to talk to them. Uh, this was an engagement where we asked for suggestions from governors and members of Congress uh, to give us a list, and then uh, working within the different uh, offices here, uh, an ultimate selection was made, but we saw um, input from the governors and the congressional delegation. Sean, Sean, Sean Abby. Um, since Friday, the president has tweeted four times about health care, but he's also tweeted six times about the U.S. Women's Open, which was held at a private property um, that is owned by his company. So the question is, is it appropriate for him to um, essentially advertise his private business using his um, Twitter feed and his time um, when comparatively less time is being spent on health care, an issue that, as you know, is the most important issue to Americans right now? Well, I, I respectfully disagree with that. I mean, in the sense that you sending off a tweet takes what, five, ten seconds. Um, as I just mentioned to Kristen, he's been extremely engaged throughout the weekend, making phone calls, talking to folks, meeting with his team, um, getting updates. So to compare a tweet with a meeting or a phone call uh, of substance is probably a little... But he did spend a lot of his weekend at the U.S. Women's Open and seemed to be very engaged in it. I mean, the tweets are perhaps a second long, but it seems to indicate what the president is spending his time on. So how do you assure the country that he actually is, in fact, engaged on health care. Um, well, I mean, look at... Look at we know where he right. over the weekend. He's been tweeting about it. Because I, I would suggest to you, one, I just told you um, that he's been extremely engaged in talking to different senators. I know that some of them um, have mentioned that they had extensive discussions with them. But number two, uh, this is the same group of, you know, we, we got a lot of that it'll never get through the House. Um, we worked, he continued to work hard, he continued to be engaged then, and, and it came out. Um, we continue to do what we have to do and we'll make it work. But um, we're going to get this done. We'll go move on. We'll do tax reform. We're going to do infrastructure. The President's got a very robust agenda. And I think when you look at the amount of um, activity that he's been able to do and the results that he's getting, I think uh, that that speaks for itself. Andrew. Uh, sure. Yeah, just sure. A quick one. Um, uh, Ivanka Trump's, the, the head of Ivanka Trump's business, said that uh, there it is currently not possible to make her products um, here in the United States. So what is the White House's or this administration's policy remedy for companies like that who say there's just no way to do it? How do they make their products here in America? I mean, I can't answer that question in the sense that I'm not. But, but I can tell you that it depends on the product, right? I mean, there are certain things that certain industries that we don't do as much anymore, and there are certain things that we do do more. I mean, there's a, there's a certain thing that uh, – certain aspects of technology and labor. But as I mentioned before, in terms of scalability, there are certain things – um, that, that we may not have the capacity to do here in terms of having a plant or a factory that can do it. Um, the beautiful thing about uh, a capitalistic society is that if there's enough of a demand for it, uh, it will happen. And I think that's what the President's trying to do, is if you lower the tax rate, if you lower the regulatory burden, um, you know, you will hopefully grow businesses and hope grow manufacturing. I've talked to several um, CEOs and, and business leaders in the past couple of weeks about tax reform. And it's amazing how many of them tell you that they pay the 35% rate. And you say to them, what will you do if, we, if that rate drops? And the number one thing they talk about is they're going to invest and build more in their company. Um, and I think that's what we need to do. But, but some, some lines, some industries, some products um, may not have the scalability or the demand here in this country. Uh, but like so many other things, that if, if that demand um, 
is if there's enough of a demand, then hopefully someone builds a factory and does it. Um, but we've seen that, you know, in your own industry, where you saw um, the decline of, of newspapers, for example, and you've seen a lot of more online source, uh, online content, and online publications. That's, you know, the evolution sometimes of some industries. Um, but I'm sure somewhere around the world, the newspapers still get delivered every day, is you know, in a, in a much greater way than they do here. handbags, shirts, purses, whatever, if there's no capacity, is it appropriate to make those things overseas? Well, think about all of the things that we buy every day. Um, of course, there's a, there's a market because we, we depend um, in this country for so many goods and services, some of which are made in America, some of which aren't. Obviously, we want to create an environment in which more things are made here, more things are exported from here, um, and that's what the President's agenda sets out to do. So I, I got to go to the birthday girl. Whoa. Kayla. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. Sarah. Oh, thanks. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was, don't even want to get into it. It's Kayla's birthday. She's not here. I saw Eamon. I thought CNBC. My apologies. I'll take a second question. Yeah, you already. And then I'll go to you. Back to the JCPOA. I know yeah. you don't want to get ahead of the announcement about the recertification, but the administration has been reviewing it for some time now, even though the president has already made definitive statements about what he thinks should be done on the Iran deal. So mm -hmm. did he make those statements without having sufficient information about the Iran deal, or is the review ongoing because he's open to changing his position on the Iran deal if new information came to light? Uh, yeah, I, I've got to say, I, I mean, I think the president from throughout the campaign until now has made very clear that he thinks it's a bad deal. Um, and initially he recertified it because they weren't, you know, because he was had the, the luxury of having an entire team here, both from state, national, you know, DOD, NSC, to review it. Uh, that time is up, and, and state will make its announcement very shortly. But uh, I, I think he's been very consistent with the fact that he thought it was a bad deal. So, Andrew. Thank you, Sean. Uh, two questions and a short follow-up. Um, when the president took office, one of the things he ordered was a 90-day uh, cybersecurity review. That deadline came and went. It's been several months. Can you update us on you know, where that report is? Has it been completed? And if it hasn't been completed, uh, why? I, I will get back to you on the report. Yeah, this he did sign an executive order on cyber. Uh, making sure that we have the resources necessary to protect our key critical infrastructure. Right. And the same question. Last week there was a large online uh, day of action on uh, net neutrality uh, organized and participated by many uh, of the largest uh, companies in America, you know, Amazon, uh, Apple, Facebook, a lot of the you know, technology economy that's you know, driving the U.S. economy. Granted, the, the FCC is an independent agency, but uh, does the president believe that uh, net, net, network neutrality is an important thing and an open internet is important to the American economy? Uh, well, again, I, as you noted, the FCC is an independent uh, agency. I would refer you to them with respect yeah, to, to, to I, I don't. I have not addressed net neutrality uh, specifically. Can you get but back to it? I, I will yeah. definitely get back to you, Katie. Thanks, Thanks Sean. Uh, the Ukraine government reportedly went into damage control mode in an effort to make amends when President Trump won the election after working with DNC Clinton administration officials uh, to undermine its candidacy. Was this an issue that was discussed during President Poroshenko's visit to the White House in June? And has the president discussed it with us? You know, I, I actually, that's a, an interesting question. I will have to get back to you. I do, I mean, obviously there's been a lot more interest in recent days um, with respect to uh, what the DNC did in coordination with the Ukrainian government to try to collude and achieve a goal uh, of having someone removed, which ultimately did happen. So um, I, I don't know whether that came up with the president. Uh, I'd be glad to look into the call. I know that that story and the DNC's collusion with the Ukrainian government has definitely gotten a lot more attention since that meeting. Um, so I'm not sure that it was necessarily topical at the time. Um, but now that there's been uh, renewed interest and what the DNC did, uh, I'm glad to, to look further. Sean, what the DNC did have any impact on this administration's policies towards Ukraine? I, I don't, again, I don't, it wasn't something that was discussed at the time of the visit that I'm aware of. I'd be glad to follow up and find out whether that did come up. But again, my only point is that at the time of the visit, I don't believe it was the, the, as topical as it, was, it is now. Sean. George. Uh, at a briefing uh, last month, you said you didn't believe the president uh, factored in when he made a trip what his popularity is in that country. Now we have a uh, report of a transcript 
of a conversation between Prime Minister May and the President in which he asked her to quote unquote fix his popularity so he gets a better reception. Uh, do you have any reason to doubt the accuracy of that transcript that that conversation took place and do you still believe that he doesn't factor in his popularity? Uh, I, I believe that uh, I'm not going to comment on leaked, uh, rumored leaked conversations. I will say that he was pleased to accept Her Majesty's invitation and looks forward to, uh, to visiting the United Kingdom. Ken. North Korea, um, South Korea has offered to hold talks. Right. What's the President's view of that? Are there certain conditions that the President would like to see met before those talks take place? Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, those comments came out of the Republic of Korea, and I would refer you back to them. That being said, I think the President's been clear in the past uh, with respect that uh, any type of conditions uh, that would have to be met are clearly far away from where we are now. Jeff. Uh, Sean, has the White House been monitoring the demonstrations in Venezuela? Do you have any reaction to that? Um, yeah, we obviously are, are concerned uh, about that. Um, we've been watching what's been going on. We congratulate the Venezuelan people for the huge turnout in the referendum yesterday and the unmistakable statement that they made that they, and that they delivered to their government. We condemn the violence inflicted by government thugs against innocent voters and efforts by the government to erode democracy in Venezuela. Uh, we once again call for the uh, Constituent Assembly of July 30th to be canceled and for free and fair elections to be scheduled. Just one follow-up yeah. on Iran. Um, a senior commander in Iran's Revolutionary Guard said today that if the United States designated the group a terrorist organization and applied new sanctions, that it would be perilous for U.S. forces in the region. Do you have a reaction to that? Uh, I don't think our forces will ever be. What was the word? Uh, peril? No. I, I think our forces are the greatest fighting machine in, in the world, and we will do everything we can to protect our country. Uh, and to make sure that we extinguish any threats that, uh, that we face. Thank you, guys. Hope to have you uh, get a good look at what's going on outside, and uh, the pool will do a great job. Thanks. Will you uh, release the senator's names? Why here um, from, I guess, probably Quantico, and also is it appropriate to use uh, military resources for a political event? Uh, well, it would be at bowling. Uh, is where I believe that's held. Uh, but, you know, I think we're, we're very proud. I mean, the, the idea is to showcase this week things that are made in America. And I know uh, Sikorsky and the state of Connecticut are very proud of the fact uh, that they contribute to our national security, that there are, I, I assume, hundreds if not thousands of people whose job depends on that. And I think, uh, like most Americans, we're all proud of, of the helicopter and other military equipment that so many Americans work tirelessly to do. So, of course, it's appropriate to highlight that. Uh, Hunter. Thank you, Sean. Um, I'm wondering whether you can tell us um, if Made in America Week will include the Trump Organization or Ivanka Trump brands committing to stop manufacturing wares abroad. Say that. I'm sorry. If the if this as part of Made in America Week, if the Trump Organization or Ivanka Trump's brands will make any kind of commitment to stop manufacturing um, gifts, clothes, and other wares yeah. abroad. So there's a couple things that are interesting about that question. First, I think what's really important is the President's agenda, regulatory relief and tax relief, um, are focused on trying to make sure that all companies can hire here, can expand here, can manufacture here. Uh, that's something that he wants for every company, and you've seen him talk about that extensively. Um, with respect to you know, his own companies, obviously it's inappropriate uh, to discuss uh, the, how anything would affect their own companies. But I can tell you that in some cases, uh, there are certain supply chains or scalability that may not be available in this country. Um, I'm not going to comment on specific products, but I will tell you that uh, the overall arching goal, of course, though, is to grow manufacturing, to grow investment here in the United States, and to grow uh, U.S. workers here. So that, that remains the, the overall objective. But obviously, it might be a sacrifice <coughs> given certain questions about going rates and stuff, but wouldn't it be sort of a... Simply, he did. The President's made it clear through his tweet, um, and, uh, and there was nothing that, as far as we know, that would lead anyone to believe that, uh, that there was anything except for a discussion about adoption of the Majinsky Act. But um, I would refer you back to counsel on that one. Okay. And can I ask about counsel about Mark Kasowitz? He was um, reportedly, he exchanged emails with a uh, private citizen with a, a number of threats and a profanity-laced uh, set of comments. Um, does the White House and the President still have confidence in Mr. Kasowitz to um, speak for uh, the administration on this Russian matter? Yes, he does. And I, I know Mr. Kasowitz has, has issued an apology in that matter. Zeke? Thanks, John. Um, first, uh, follow up to his question there. Um, 
the president's tweet this morning uh, regarding uh, the Russian investigation is, did Ty Cobb vet that? Could you talk a little bit about his role? Is his job here to manage the president's personal response to the Russian investigation? Um, Mr. Cobb, you know, as you know, within the counsel's office, there are various attorneys that have different portfolios. Um, and uh, while we have outside counsel, a lot of times the requests that we get from this room require us to go to counsel and say, can we answer this question? Uh, what, what can we say or can't we say? Um, you do your best a lot of times to, to get us to, uh, to make a case why this should be answered by the White House. And so we, we end up spending a lot of time talking to the counsel's office uh, about what can and can't be referred to outside counsel, what still remains in our purview. Uh, and so uh, it was the decision of the White House uh, to bring someone on board that, like in a lot of other areas that we have counsels dedicated to that, uh, that the, there was significant um, in interest in the subject to, to do that. So in the case of the President's tweet this morning, was that something that went through uh, this, uh, Mr. Cobb? I, I don't believe so. And, th and one, just one uh, follow on uh, Made in America. Uh, you mentioned uh, this, this Scorsese helicopter on this park in South Lawn that would be known as Marine One. Um, who paid for that? Margaret. Sean, good to see you back here. Question for you, too. One on Iran. Will this administration certify Iran's compliance with the nuclear deal? Uh, the uh, JCPOA uh, authority was delegated to the State Department. And the Secretary of Defense, excuse me, the Secretary of State will uh, have an announcement very shortly on, on that deal. Uh, I think you all know that the President has made very clear uh, that he thought this was a bad deal, a bad deal for the United States. Um, and I will uh, wait until the State Department makes further action before going any further. And secondly, your uh, counterpart in Russia, uh, Dmitry Peskov, who speaks for Vladimir Putin, said today that uh, they expect their properties that were seized by the prior administration to be returned and without any uh, stipulations or attachments to that. Uh, was this discussed with the president? Does the president have a strong view? What is it that the president would like to see in return before handing these properties back? I, I know that Secretary Tillerson. Uh, that falls under his purview. He has been having discussions, and, and I would refer you to the State Department for. This came from Vladimir Putin's office. I, I understand that, but in our country right now, the Secretary of State is handling that that portfolio, uh, and so I would refer you to them on that. But did the President bring this up at all in his conversations in Hamburg with Vladimir Putin? I, I don't. I don't know. I, I'd be glad to find out on that. I don't believe it did, but I'd be glad to find out. Tolo. Uh, thank you, John. Um, the President tweeted earlier today that. Uh, most politicians would have gone into the meeting like the one Don Jr. attended in order to get info on an opponent that has politics. His FBI director nomination, nominee said that uh, anyone who was approached by a hostile government uh, for opposition research should contact the FBI rather than taking the meeting. Uh, who's right and, and what's the White House's position on whether or not it's okay to meet with a hostile government for opposition research? Well, look, you know I'm not going to get into the specifics of this, uh, but I will say that um, that is quite often for people who are given information during the heat of a campaign uh, to to ask what that is. Uh, that's what a way to show leadership. To uh, again, I, it, it would be it's not appropriate for me to stand up here and comment about a business. I, I believe you know that that's a little out of bounds. But again, I would go back to the president's broader goal, which is to create uh, investment here to bring back the manufacturing base. And I think when you look at a lot of these indices that measure uh, confidence. Um, both in terms of CEOs, manufacturers, and uh, that th th they're all-time highs. And I think part of that is that there's a lot of confidence that the president's agenda uh, is going to accomplish that. Charlie? Uh, just a question about the DHS decision to allow 15,000 new temporary worker visas. How does that not conflict with the president's higher American message? I, again, I'll, I'll refer you to DHS on this, but I think one of the things that you're seeing through this is uh, it's not just the number, it's it's a lot of the qualifications and a lot of the uh, a lot of that goes through there to ensure that we are hire, hiring and bringing in the people. As you know, um, the President has been uh, supportive of the RAISE Act by Senators Cotton and Purdue, uh, which seeks to uh, really look at it more of a merit-based immigration system, and that's something that he uh, continues to push for and will continue to work with uh, Senators Cotton and Purdue and others to, to help get that uh, in, a, in a place that will focus more on merit-based um, and really provide the overall reform that, that he's been talking about for a long time. Dave. Sean, thanks. What's the White House reaction to the government of Iran announcing that the, they've sentenced the Chinese-American student from Princeton to 10 years for espionage? And um, also, could you fill us in on any new sanctions on Iran? Uh, I'm not going to comment on any new sanctions. If there are some, I, at that point, Treasury would be the one to make that announcement uh, when that's appropriate. Um, obviously, we're disappointed um, in, in that. and. Um, 
with respect to, to that individual, he is someone that we're keeping an eye on. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Sean. Um, with regard, I want to ask you about steel tariffs. The president told reporters on the plane last week that he was considering tariffs and quotas uh, with regard to foreign steel. Right. This being Made in America Week, um, you know, do, can we expect an announcement? Has the president made up his mind on whether he's going to do tariffs, quotas, or both? I think that the president's comments on Air Force One speak for themselves. When he's ready to make an announcement on that, we'll, 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 be, we'll share that with you. But uh, that is something that the team is still discussing with him. John Decker. Uh, thanks a lot, Sean. Is the president resigned to the idea that it seems unlikely that the Senate will vote on any type of repeal and replace bill any time in the immediate future? I, I know that Senator McConnell has made it clear that he would like Senator McCain back. We obviously wish him a speedy recovery. And as soon as Senator McConnell, um, uh, as soon as Senator McCain can travel back and Senator McConnell uh, feels it's appropriate, he'll schedule that vote. We feel very confident about where we are now, and we look forward to uh, getting that bill on the president's desk and getting it signed. And on, Jim. On Made yeah. in America, I just wanted to ask you a real quick question. I yeah. realize you can't speak, as you said, specifically about um, the president, Donald J. Trump organization's companies, but just wanted to get a, a, a view from you on what critics are saying about whether the president is the right vessel for this message. After all, um, he has uh, shirts made in China and Bangladesh and India, um, other products made like Trump vodka made in the Netherlands. So give me a sense, if you could, about whether the president is the right vessel for the message that he's going to deliver later today. Um, before other press. Yeah, yeah I, I actually look at it in a very different way, which is the, the president's been a very successful businessman on a number of fronts and a number of areas and industries. And to understand very firsthand what the tax burden and what the regulatory burden do to a business that wants to grow or expand here or hire here. Uh, so I think he actually is in a very unique way, uh, understands the challenge.